Okadi here. Today we're going to be doing a quick video on a new build. We're going to be doing Forge Guard, Rive, Healing Hands, and it's a pretty straightforward build, similar to the Healing Hands Paladin build. Uh, we're just at 134 Corruption right here, right now. We're at level 88, 89. I'll have a, a link to the build to the current character down in the comments and uh, we'll get to creating a build guide once we have figured out exactly how we want this build to operate uh, but in the meantime we'll do this 134 corruption as with the paladin build the forge guard is going to be using a melee attack to trigger healing hands off of cleric's hammer we're using rive because of its increased base attack speed and its high increases to attack speed that it has and then we're using Forge Hammer to get the buffs on the character from Forge Hammer. And we're using Scrap Metal on Arrive to have some increased buffs, damage, and armor. And then Healing Hands, of course, is providing us with a source of ward. And we'll go over a little bit more of the details after we get through this echo. After the Echo, we're going to do a quick Raya kill at 134 Corruption, and then we'll do a quick Orbis kill so that you can kind of see damage and an Echo, damage versus a boss, and damage versus Orbis here. We do have relatively good gear at level 88, so we are flying through this pretty quickly. Uh, we are using Anvil Stance, so it is the tankier version of the build. You could not run Anvil Stance and do 25% more damage, but then you take 25% more damage, and I have found that tankiness is always superior to just small increases in damage. Um, I will happily give up 25% more damage for 25% less damage taken every day of the week on probably every character I've played. Um, especially since damage is so much easier to scale than defenses are. And so we're coming up on the last little piece here. We are using bottle reversal still for the increased damage taken to enemies and the increased attack speed. Right now we're running like 145% base attack speed. Or like 125% base attack speed. And then plus the attack speed from Rive and the attack speed from Volatile Reversal. Uh, you could have significantly higher attack speed. The gear on this guy is strong, but it is not the best. Still has a lot of room for improvement. Go ahead and get our Raya kill in here. We can pretty much just tank everything that Raya throws at us, even with 52% void of this, because it is only 134 corruption. And we do have a significant amount of ward even for this level of character. That will grow over time. I love having to dodge your stuff, Brian. As you can see, Raya pretty much just melts. We use Forge Hammer on cooldown for the buffs that it provides us. We use Volatile Reversal on cooldown for the buffs that it provides us. And then we use Void Cleave as our movement ability. It's also one of our best clearing abilities. Our ward, you can see, gets up to about 15k in our current gear. I think end game gear will probably be hitting 35 to 40k. A little bit less than what the Paladin is getting, but still phenomenal amounts of ward, especially if we're taking much less damage on the Forge Knight than we are on the Paladin. Uh, I think later on in our build, we'll consider using a Titan Heart, although that'll be a tough one to give up armor, because we don't have a lot of slots that have high armor on them. Since we are using a Peak of the Mountain, and we are using Solaron's boots, so we may have to keep our armor up with our body armor. As you can see, Shady Boy here just melts. This ability hits kind of hard, so we are able to tank that. That's good. And we have an Execute. Easy, 
easy. Like I said, the build link will be down in the comments. We'll kind of go over everything real quickly here. We are using Forge Strike for the buffs of 100% armor, 30% global fire penetration, 15 global melee damage, and a little bit of armor shred if you have used the, the ability within the last four seconds. So we just use this on cooldown. It has a four second cooldown. Um, we go ahead and take the singular craft and put the sword just for the more attack speed here on put the sword. This means that past time, the animation, everything on Forge Strike is much, much less so that we can use it more frequently. And then we are using well forged weapons over here because this forged weapon duration does affect the duration of our scrap metal here. So Rive is our primary ability. We take the attack speed all the way over to the till threshold, three out of three on third strike, down here to more damage versus ignited enemies, and a little bit of ignite to get there. Of course, bow cleaver and scrap metal. This is a quick reminder, bow cleaver doubles the damage stats and the ailment stats of a two-handed weapon while we are using Rive. Do have Apathy's Maul with which is what we're using. That means that it's 202 melee damage, 184% physical damage, 186 melee void damage, 200% chance to apply doom, and then 176% increased melee damage. Tremendous stats. We did slam increased melee attack speed and melee crit strike chance on this. If you did not, have access to an Aptis Maul or Legendary Potential, you can run one base. It's still a great weapon, but you might be better off using a sword that has melee attack speed and melee crit chance on it. If you don't have access to melee attack speed or crit chance, um, you can pull some points out of your night damage over here and move it over into first and second strike, and then pull some points out of here and move them down to adrenaline so you have more critical strike chance. That is an option. You can also come out of the execute here to get points down here. And then if you don't have a plus three vibe body armor, again, you can take points out of the increased ignite damage and move these over to some are more useful as well. So you have some options there. Scrap metal and the increased attack speed and the third strike 45% damage here, kind of your, your biggest modifiers to make sure that you have on the build. Void Cleave, you already think, has our transversal skill. We have converted it to fire because then the physical damage increases on a weapon, also increases the damage of the weapon, as well as the melee damage. So it's better as a fire damaging skill. We also have global fire penetration from our buff on Forge Hammer and so on and so forth. So as a fire skill, this is better. We do take this base crit chance on it, plus 2%, just to make sure that it caps its crit. It's also nice because it cannot be dodged. There's a lot of little dodgy mobs out there. We do the increased cooldown recovery speed here and over to melee damage to high health. This is our movement skill and it is our cleave down large packs of little crappy mobs. So does a very good job of killing large packs of little crappy mobs. Healing hands we're using for cleric's hammer, down to seraph's blade, over to bane of evil, and then down to urgent healing. Now I have full points out of blessed perish because Rive is a relatively small AOE, so if Rive hits some healing hands, it's going to hit him. Move those points over the increased healing effectiveness here and increased healing effectiveness here. Uh, in order to power the now six mana cost, four point seven attacks per second Rive or whatever it is, we are on our passive tree using time and faith, which allows us to get mana back whenever we Rive. Um, you can make some changes to that if you, if you don't want to use that ability, you can move these points back down into a plus hit players. And then volatile reversal, standard pair here, 30% damage taken, 30% increased attack speed, two rifts, and all the cooldown reduction. Nothing complicated here. Passive trees. We're actually finished with our forge guard tree here. We do get physical resistance when hit, primarily the increased armor when hit. Uh, we come over here so that we can take eight out of eight champions of the forge. We go over here so we can get five out of five hammer and anvil. We sit in anvil stance all of the game, but the axes that we're throwing from axe thrower do trigger is shred and fire shred. 
we are it is and fire damage so this is a very good note for us anyway um i took two out of eight here just because i needed that to get over to might and then take might down to duelist over to lethal strikes for crit strike chance and crit strike multiplier you can pull some points out of here if you don't need this increased critical strike chance, but you probably will. Take three points in here for five out of five here. Less damage taken over time. This is phenomenal. Very few sources of reduced damage over time. Damage over time is one of the only vulnerabilities of the Sentinel class. They always have high armor, usually have access to block, have lots of flat damage reduction. And so damage over time is the only thing that's really dangerous to them. So this is a wonderful node here. We take one and the Avatar of War. We get hit a lot. It's increased melee damage. It, it, it probably nets out very, very well. Uh, but generally, it's just one point. So it's perfectly fine. And so if you don't want to take Hammer and Anvil, because you don't want to do less damage, you can just pull these points out. I would advise putting these points in. Uh, but you can just stick these points down here and attune in armor. Um, but I have found that the less damage taken is phenomenal. Very, very strong no use. It's good. Over in Paladin, we do take eight out of eight for the increased physical and fire damage and physical and fire penetration. So that is an important node. And then as we level up, we're probably going to go deeper into here and pick up some of the other nodes that are available to us here. Or we might move over to Void Knight and, and polish off some of the Void Knight buffs and get like 1% crit multi here and 10% increased damage here. I haven't decided. We are level 87, so we've got 13 points left to spend, and we'll figure out where to spend those. Um, quickly over to just the base one. We do go over here for the fire resistance, the void resistance primarily. We do do the damage taken from nearby enemies and the increased cooldown recovery speeds for movement skills a la Void Cleave. Like I said, we take time and faith for the mana, three out of five axe thrower for toss of axes, and then 30% increased attack speed for our axe here. Now that is pretty much it for this build. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and continue pushing it. I'll I'll get it up to level 100, and then I will put a build guide officially together once we're there, maybe some 500 corruption examples, push it on the arena ladder, see how far we can go and get that all put together. Should have everything done within maybe two to four days, depending on how much ADD happens. Um, as always, we do appreciate likes, follows, and subscribes. They are critical to us as content creators. They help us create content. So down below, hit subscribe on YouTube. Hop over to my Twitch. Give me a like on Twitch. Give me a follow anywhere you can and just say hi if you have any questions ask me you can always leave a comment down on youtube so i get to those as quickly as i can or you can hit me up on my twitch channel and i will be happy to explain everything other than that thank you very much and you have a wonderful day